Hello everyone, welcome again to another series of video from Electronics Eternity. Uh, so this time around we will be looking at uh, ESP32 still. This is the third part of this series where we create a simple Wi-Fi server using static IP and also a bit of CSS formatting. So uh, this simple Wi-Fi server is uh, actually efficient if you have uh, something of uh, how to say something of simple usage uh, when it comes to website creation for example uh, if you are creating or if you are controlling anything locally such as LED or, or fan or even some relays uh, you could use your simple Wi-Fi server right so uh, it is suitable for that because it does not require much of a processing However, if you have something more complex, then you might need to locally host your website. Okay, but for this case, it's a simple Wi-Fi server, like I said, and, and therefore we could host it using ESP32. Okay, so without further delaying, let's jump into the code. So in the code, you can see we are including this library as usual, uh, declaring our SSID and password, and also setting Wi-Fi server at a baud rate of uh, 80 uh, sorry at a port number not baud rate my bad uh, this is the port number and, and port number would be 80 okay so next let's look into the void setup usually we'll initiate the serial begin we set pin mode 5 as output which is our LED pin and then we allow some delay which is for 10 milliseconds uh, next is we will have serial print connecting to SSID which is what we have configured over here and it will try to connect so while it is trying to connect it will create a series of dot to show that it is in progress right so once it is done it will break the loop uh, break the while loop and then go to the next part okay so this next part if you could remember this is what we have covered in your static ip right so if you haven't done uh, you know watching the previous part of the videos i would suggest you to do that because that will help your understanding for this tutorial much easier okay so what we are doing is we're just setting a local ip what's the gateway what's the subnet and also what's primary dns what's the secondary dns okay so uh keep in mind that uh in whatever device uh which is connected to the website that you're opening and also your esp or everything everything needs to connect to the same wi-fi router and it should follow the same uh, gateway and subnet settings okay so don't uh, you know mistaken this and and because you would always need to follow the gateway and the subnet and and the local IP should be somewhere along the same format except for the last digits that you could play around from 0 to 2 by 5 okay uh, so that is briefly about the static IP so it's it's a simple stuff so it will try to start this configuration if it's it, once it is done uh, sorry if it failed to configure it would say station failed to configure if not it would break the if loop and it will print out the ip for you then we would begin our server okay so that is pretty much it for the setup now let's look into the void loop Okay, so white loop is a little complicated, but I'll try to explain and make it as simple as possible. Okay, so the first thing, Wi-Fi client look if, if server is available, right? So uh, basically what it's saying is if server is available, then we have a client. We have a Wi-Fi client name client, all right? So probably I could change this to avoid a bit of confusion so if client is true then we would say serial print new client and we would create a string as current line so this will basically hold whatever responses that we get from our uh, Wi-Fi server 
So while a client is connected, uh, we, we go inside. The reason why we have while and then on top of if is because we only want to perform these actions when they are client connected, right? So we don't want to be unnecessarily uh, doing some things using our ESP32. So uh, I think it is uh, efficient to do so, so that only when client is connected, we are performing this uh, series of commands, which will create websites and then, you know, get the responses. So if client is available, you have to read what the client is telling you and you store it in uh, a character named C, right? So it will write serial write C, okay? So if C is equal to slash N, which is referring to a new line, then you need to check what is the current line length, right? Current line is a, is a string that we created earlier so if it's equals to zero then we would print the whole thing so this is basically telling that you know http 200 okay success that is respond code to indicate that the request has succeeded a 200 response is cacheable by default so this is some default uh, I, I suppose like syntax or interpretation when it comes to html connection right so uh, this is by default it needs to be there so I didn't actually dive deep into it because this is just the basic of uh, I think HTTP connection or HTML okay so it's like HTML 101 you need to have it there so I just kept it there so that everything is working fine okay so since the current line length is equal to zero that means there's pretty much nothing in the in the website okay so what we are going to do next is we are going to create a website right so we are basically saying client print had all this blah 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 html and next we have headers and next we have buttons okay so uh if you just look at it over here and you try to read it through it's it's a bit tedious right so it would be difficult to understand so what i have done in it once is I just took everything of this HTML code which construct the website apart from client print and any other Arduino syntaxes and this is how it would look like so it would look like this we have head and then as usual some style this is some CSS formatting it makes things looks nicer so basically what it's saying is button background color so there is no border uh, hold on so this is so style is the button and what do we have here so we have background color is green and uh, we have border none color is white I think that's the font color we have a bit of padding and we have text alignment which should be in the center text decoration is none so that it does not underline the text display is in line block i'm not sure what it does it basically makes things uh, nicer i guess uh so so basically this is what i just took from you know like abundant supply of html codes that we have uh, I, I think one of the most popular website is w3 school you can just go there and take whatever you feel suitable for you right so that is generally the style of the button so next is we are doing some specific styling okay let me just take that out so we are doing some specific styling which says the first button is going to be green in color and the second one is going to be red and then I created some margin so that there is some spacing in between these two buttons right so that is the style and and next we have a header a header in something like like dark blue or dark gray color which says electronic eternity and we have two buttons over here when the buttons are pressed it will produce h and slash or l and slash right so this is how 
it looks like if I just if I were to open this in a if I were to just open that this whole thing named as test2.html file which I already have over here this is how it would look like right so let me just change something to prove that you know this is the right uh, you know HTML file for this for example let's say random stuff right let's just type something as random stuff and I'm going to save it over here I'm going to refresh the page as you can see random stuff popped up over here right so I'm um, just doing this to prove that you know this is the actual page which control which construct this okay so so going back to that Arduino client print just now so all this is just basically printing out the website you just take whatever you have over here and and you put it in lines over in your client print for ESP32 okay so once that is done uh, we're gonna break that and that is that is all for this part which basically says if current line length equal to zero then I'm gonna print the whole website however if it's not I'm not gonna do anything right I'm gonna just keep the current line equals to nothing right if if it's equal to zero then i'll be printing the web page if it's not then i'll be nullifying the content of this current line stream okay so that is for the first part of if over here so when we see new line over here then we perform this however if we get anything apart from new line and it does not equal to slash r which is a carriage return so what we're going to do here is we're going to store that in the string called current line okay so now the reason why we're doing this so that whatever response that we get from the website we could make use of it okay so for an example let me just open that website just now if you can see what happens when I click turn on LED uh, it's not leading to anywhere because there is no actual reference link however you could see that we have created a h slash over here all right so but previously it was like this test to HTML but when you click it created an h over here and the same goes with when we click turn off LED it creates an L sorry not ml it creates a l all right uh, so uh, this is the idea that we will use to decipher responses from the website okay so however since this is based on an uh, a html file which is hosted locally it's not going to go anywhere it's going to say you know i could not find anything okay so that is for receiving responses from the server so once we get the responses and we see if current line ends with get slash hitch which is what we put over here right sorry it's not ends with slash h you need the slash no matter what uh, basically what he's saying here if it ends with hitch okay so the same thing over here right uh, this is an opening line sorry this is an opening slash and this is a close slash and you have this over here okay so basically what it's saying is when I click this button it's only gonna throw me an hitch not an h again oh my god it's only gonna throw hitch and if I click the other button which is the second button it's gonna throw L okay so for H, I'm going to have to write a digital high to pin number 5 and for L, I'm going to have to write digital low to pin number 5, right? So uh, I suppose that is the end of this big while loop, okay? So once it is done, once uh, there is 
no more client connected it would stop and it would say serial print client disconnect okay so I have uploaded this code into my ESP32 so you know what just, just for the sake of proving it let me upload it again okay So press the button when you see connecting and take it off when you see writing in the output window of course. So this is why I don't prefer to upload in the videos because it takes a little too long. Okay. Just a little bit longer. Just wait. Okay. So we're almost done. Okay. So all this is done. Let's go to serial monitor and see what is happening. So connecting to guest network, which is my SSID over here, and this is the IP, right? 192.168.68.222. Alright, so let's go over here. And open this 192.168.68.222 right so let me just take out this okay so uh, this is the website the or the Wi-Fi server should I say uh, that that uh, that is now available right so if you could see when I click turn on LED my LED is blinking when I click turn off my LED is turning off so as I said there is a notable difference with the ending in the website URL which is we have an L not NL oh my god we have H we have L at the end of it okay so this like really simple concept uh, really helps out a lot in you know like just just with the simple change in the UR URL uh, suffix we could uh, you know we could then deduce some actions right so so the same concept you could uh, expand it to something even more complex right so uh, so I you know so th uh, th that's why this simple Wi-Fi e even though it's it uses you know some simple concept or some simple checking of URL it, it is uh, still a relevant and a suitable uh, idea when it comes to hosting a local Wi-Fi server or if you're trying to control something locally just like if you have a local relay that's going to turn on your uh, table lamp or your yard lamp or just about whatever uh, you could still use this uh, you know simple Wi-Fi server simply because it's small it's not that complex but then again it does the job all right so with that being said we have come to the end of the tutorial i know this is a bit of a long one but i just wanted to make sure that everyone understands the concept and you could apply that into your project so i hope you have learned something new uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe as usual thank you until we meet again bye bye